Throughout history, humans have compared dogs and big cats, often wondering why dogs never reach the same massive sizes as lions or tigers. Both groups are apex predators in their own right, but their evolutionary paths, hunting strategies, and body designs explain why one grew into giants while the other remained lean, fast, and pack-oriented. There are no naturally evolved wild dogs that can match a lion, a tiger, or even a jaguar in size. That's not an opinion. It's a fact of nature. Some dogs, like Great Danes, Mastiffs, or Wolf hybrids can grow to impressive sizes, but these are products of selective breeding by humans. None of them evolved in the wild to be what they are. Big cats are different. Every species of big cat, lions, tigers, jaguars, leopards, exists because of millions of years of evolution shaping them into solitary hunters. Their size was not optional. It was a survival advantage. By contrast, the wolf is the largest natural canine we still have. The northwestern wolf is the heavyweight of its kind, but even its largest specimens barely reach 80 kilograms. That is nowhere near the 200 kilograms of a lion or the 300 kilograms of a tiger. Foxes, coyotes, and jackals are effective hunters too, but they do not occupy the same apex role. If you are looking for a dog equivalent of a lion or tiger, you will not find it in today's world. But in the past, nature did experiment with giant dogs. They were real, powerful, and for a time they thrived. But ultimately, they lost. The reasons lie in the survival strategies of predators. Most large predators fall into two main categories, pack hunters and solitary ambush predators. Canines are almost always pack hunters. Wolves, doles, African wild dogs, bush dogs, dingoes, even New Guinea singing dogs. Every one of them relies on teamwork. They take down prey not by sheer strength, but by endurance, coordination, and relentless pursuit. Their anatomy reflects this. Long, narrow legs for distance running, stiff joints to withstand the impact, and blunt claws for traction rather than slashing. Their bodies are built for movement, not grappling. Because of this strategy, size is not an advantage. Being too large burns more energy, slows pursuit, and offers no benefit during the kill. Pack hunters don't need to overpower prey instantly. They simply need to run it down until exhaustion. Their teeth are shaped to crush and tear, turning every part of the carcass, muscle, sinew, even bone, into food. Evolution found the perfect balance point for canines, rewarding efficiency over excess. Cats evolved along a very different path. They are ambush predators, and ambush demands size, power, and precision. Unlike wolves, they hunt alone. When the moment comes, there is no backup, no second chance. Everything depends on one sudden burst of strength. Their anatomy is perfectly adapted for this. Heavy limbs for grappling, retractable claws curved like hooks, and shoulder joints that allow their forelimbs to lock prey in place. Big cats don't just bite, they tackle and wrestle. They use their entire body as a weapon. Their stalking style allows them to save energy until the final moment, making their bulk an asset rather than a hindrance. Shorter snouts give them greater bite force, while their long canines deliver swift, lethal strikes. Ironically, felines have larger canine teeth than canines themselves, with some species, like the clouded leopard, carrying saber-like fangs relative to their size. This is where evolution diverged. Canines perfected endurance, teamwork, and efficiency. Felines perfected stealth, strength, and solo takedowns. For cats, bigger always meant stronger pounces, more grappling power, and greater control over prey. For dogs, bigger only meant wasted energy. Evolution rewarded cats for growing large, while it punished dogs for it. In the end, wolves may run their prey for kilometers, but lions and tigers can end a hunt in seconds. That is the reason why wild dogs never reached the colossal sizes of big cats. Their strategies were written into their bones, and in nature, the rules of survival always decide who grows massive and who remains lean. Predators survive by strategy, and canines already had one that worked. Their method was simple. Wear the prey down, then bring it down. No sudden finish, no precision strike, just exhaustion. That is why evolution kept them within a certain range of size. Wolves, for example, grew large enough to handle the cold and strong enough to bring down decent-sized prey, yet they remained light and fast enough to run for miles. Any bigger, and the trade-off was not worth it. There is no benefit in chasing down a deer if you burn more calories than you get back. But millions of years ago, there were massive dog-like predators. They were not just large by canine standards, they were giants, period. 
One of the most famous was Epigeon hedeni. It lived in North America around 10 million years ago and could weigh more than 300 pounds, heavier than most lions. It was built nothing like a modern wolf. With a massive head and jaws designed for crushing bone, not slicing or stabbing, its skull was broad and powerful, often compared to that of a lion. Yet the rest of its body still resembled that of a dog. Epicheon belonged to a group called the Borophagines, often referred to as the bone-crushing dogs. These were not ordinary pack hunters. They were bulky, top-tier predators capable of taking down large prey and consuming everything, bones included. Their jaws were highly specialized, making them brutally efficient. For a time, they dominated. Even before them, there were the Hesperocyon, more primitive dog-like creatures that paved the way. At one point, three major branches of ancient canines existed side by side in North America, the Borophagines, the Hesperocyon, and the ancestors of modern canines. They were three evolutionary experiments competing for dominance. The Borophagines started small but gradually evolved into larger, more specialized predators. Their bone-crushing adaptations allowed them to make full use of every kill, extracting calories even from bones. That efficiency gave them an edge and let them grow larger than their competitors. Eventually, they outcompeted the Hesperocyon entirely, leaving only two branches, the hyper-specialized Borophagines and the leaner, more adaptable canines that would one day become wolves and dogs. Then everything changed when the cats arrived. For millions of years, North America had been ruled by dogs. The big cats had not yet entered the scene. But eventually, felines migrated from Eurasia into the continent. At first, they were just another competitor. But soon, they began climbing the food chain. These cats did not hunt like dogs. They brought a different playbook, stealth, power, and precision. That difference proved critical. They were not pack hunters chasing prey for miles. They stalked silently, attacked with explosive force, and killed with deadly efficiency. Their claws, flexible joints, and powerful bites allowed them to wrestle prey into submission in ways dogs never could. And, crucially, they hunted the very same large prey that the Borophagines relied upon. This overlap turned into direct competition, and the big dogs lost. The Borophagines had committed themselves to one path. They were specialists. But when the saber-toothed cats like Smilodon arrived, they filled the same niche, only better. Faster, quieter, more agile, and more efficient with energy. Their hunts cost fewer calories, and their kills were cleaner. Meanwhile, the ancestors of modern wolves and dogs, the canines that had never grown too large, never over-specialized, and never tied themselves to a single prey source, survived. They could hunt in packs, chase down medium game, or adapt to smaller meals. They were flexible, and flexibility meant survival. That is why wolves today are lean, medium-sized, and built for endurance, not solo combat. They descend from the survivors who stayed adaptable when the giants vanished. Dogs have been big before. Evolution tried it, but the strategy never lasted. In the end, cats held the advantage and the bone-crushing dogs became a lost chapter in prehistory. I hope you like our video. If you like, don't forget to hit subscribe button for future interesting videos. Thanks for watching.